My friends, the time has come, no more playing around. This video is very serious and it might change your guitar playing forever. Because today we're talking about the number one most neglected topic. All of us guitar players are not working on this enough and it turns out to be the absolute most important topic when it comes to mastering this beautiful instrument. Today we will finally talk about timing. <music> If you do not work on timing the right way in your practice routine, you might potentially sound like a beginner player forever because it doesn't matter how fast you can alternate pick, how cool your sweep picking sections are. If the notes are not in time, if you're constantly dragging or rushing, it will never sound professional. So allow me to show you the five pillars of awesome timing today in the form of five really cool practical and fun exercises that will immediately improve your timing when it comes to your riffs, but also of course to your guitar solos. Let's start with the first pillar of timing I like to call call offbeat scales. <laughs> So that sounds pretty cool and quite trippy, right? So the way that I recommend diving into the world of syncopation is first starting out with a continuous pattern of 16th notes in our example and always muting or blocking the downstrokes with your fretting hand, so generating that note. And of course on the upstrokes we have the notes of the scale, in our case the D Phrygian major or D Spanish Phrygian scale. So the way this exercise is constructed, you have one pattern where you're consistently picking and you're always playing a dead note for the downstrokes and the scale note for the upstrokes. But in the second half of the exercise, you're only playing those syncopated upstrokes. And that's where things get really tricky because instinctively and from experience, you will want to play those single notes in the scale with downstrokes and on the beat. So by splitting the exercise into two halves, first working on the 16th notes and then those isolated syncopated 16th notes, that will teach your hand and brain to stay locked into that 16th note grip so that it doesn't feel so awkward to randomly play some upstrokes that are not in time. You will always feel that downstroke that comes before the upstroke even if you're not playing it. And that's why this way of working with syncopation is the best way in my opinion. This exercise will get you awesome results with your timing right away. And if you're a rock or metal guitar player, I want to show you the first big benefit right away. Let's move to the second rhythmic pillar I like to call offbeat riffing. This next exercise is based on the same concept as the first one, but it might remind you of a lot of songs right away. So it's a very practical exercise. Check it out. <laughs> Alright, so I think we have all heard a riff that sounds like this at some point. And once again with the first half of the riff, those palm muted downstrokes with the low open E string make it really clear that those land on the beat, those are kind of the rhythmic center. But as you will see when you practice this exercise where it gets really trippy is when you remove those downstrokes and you only play the upstroke. Because if you hear and play the riff this way, the rhythm of the drums seems to turn around and you perceive the snare hits as being on the beat and not off beat. So even though it looks easy just playing those upstrokes. <laughs> actually quite hard and an excellent timing exercise. So when you're playing the second half of the exercise, please pay close attention to those upstrokes. You want them to hit the snare of this up-tempo drum part, but also keep counting quarter notes in your head. The drum track is not turning around rhythmically. You are playing on the off beats, even if your brain might not understand it right away, which is perfectly fine. That's why this is such an awesome exercise for rock and metal guitar riffing. Now you might ask what the benefit of this actually is when you mostly play riffs like this with the call muted note on the low E string before playing those upstrokes. First of all, it's a great workout for your upstroke motion because you don't usually work on that one isolated. It's always down, up, down, up and never up, 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 up. It's not really that common compared to continuous downstrokes, of course. So working on upstrokes in an isolated way will also make your alternate picking better and more reliable and possibly even faster if those upstrokes are currently holding you back. And aside from that, of course, please also don't forget the timing benefit of this. Playing syncopated 16th notes with your weaker picking motion will have a huge effect on your timing and rhythm skills. Now we got the basic stuff out of the way things are about to get really really interesting. I have three more awesome exercises to show you but before that I want you to know something quite important. If you want to get the most out of these videos and if you're actually serious about improving on guitar and you're not just watching these videos for fun, you can download the full timing workout package for this lesson on Patreon. The link is in the description of this video and in the first comment down below patreon.com slash burn. I recorded very slow and faster play along videos for you for every single exercise so that you can practice these awesome timing workouts together with me in your practice 
routine. That way you immediately get some visual feedback concerning my picking and fretting hand technique. You can mimic what you see on screen and that way you avoid building bad habits with your technique. You get the backing tracks with and without my guitar, a guitar profile so that you can change the tempo yourself or even make changes to the exercises and of course a detailed PDF sheet that also includes the upstrokes and downstrokes. You get immediate access to over 20 guitar courses I made especially for my Patreon community like my alternate picking masterclass or 30 day sweep picking course. So sign up with the link down below right now if you're serious about your guitar journey and about making some real progress. I'm waiting for you over there. Now let's continue with the video. So the next rhythmic pillar I'd like to talk about is something I like to call advanced syncopation. Let's start with the exercise right away because I think you will like it. I'll explain it after. So what you saw right here is once again based on a pattern of 16th notes. This time it's uninterrupted, so you're just playing down, up, down, up, down, up, and so on for the entire exercise. But the interesting thing that happens right here is that we have a lot of accents in between those dead notes. And usually when we do something like this, the accents tend to land on the downstrokes and not on the upstroke. So with this cool and quite different example, we had an accent with a downstroke just to start the phrase. Then we have two dead notes, so downstroke, upstroke, downstroke. Then for the next accent, we're gonna have to play that one with an upstroke. And then by the way, most of these accents are positioned we're gonna have to use upstrokes for them. And it's not only kind of weird and very interesting timing wise, once again, great for your upstroke motion because you're probably not that used to playing heavy accents with your upstroke. You're more likely to do that with your downstroke. So when you're practicing an awesome phrase like this, it's not only great for your timing, but also for your phrasing. Because if you often work on advanced syncopation like this in your routine, this will slowly creep into your improvised playing. And before you know it, you will play some much more interesting improvised lines where you actually have some cool accents on the upstrokes and syncopated notes. So the next rhythmic pillar I'd like to talk about is called offbeat comping. If you're not a blues, jazz or a fusion type of player, you might have never actually heard a term like this before, but I'm quite sure you actually heard playing like this before. Here's the next exercise I want you to practice. <laughs> This one looks quite simple. On the surface, you just have very, very basic chord voicings. So just triad voicings, really, root note, third, fifth. We're doing a little bit more for the D minor. Just with that one note on top. But what's actually difficult for a lot of rock and metal players, because we're all kind of used to riffing and mostly playing on one string, maybe power chords on two strings is actually playing those syncopated patterns over more than one or two strings. So with this example you have to do perform relatively quick down and up strokes over multiple strings, three in this case for both the chords and the dead notes in between. And just like the hi-hat you can hear in the drum groove, you want a quick accent of the chord that's immediately gone as soon as you switch to the dead note. And once again, these accents are actually placed on the offbeat once again. So you have to perform them with an upstroke. And it's really difficult to squeeze them into the exact right spot when you're playing over a simple drum beat like this. So once again, to get the most out of this exercise, I would recommend starting with that downstroke and with those dead notes. Then going to the accent with the upstroke. And for the second half to make it a real challenge when it comes to your timing, you're leaving out the downstrokes and the dead notes and you're really just playing the upstrokes across three strings, correctly syncopated. And right here, you will have to lift your fingers from those chords so that you create the silence in between those chord voicings. So this is great for your timing. Once again, your off beats, your upstrokes, but also for your finger technique so that you can play super fast chord sections like this, switch between the chords effortlessly and get that satisfying heavy accent followed by absolute silence. And the last pillar of my timing monument is as always my absolute favorite one. Let's dive into the world of syncopated phrasing. I prepared a really cool exercise in the form of a practical lick for you. I think you will immediately understand why this one is so interesting. Let's have a listen. Alright, I 
I think you can already guess why I'm such a fan of this lick. When you look at the transcription you can see a lot of upstrokes. So the lick does not start on the one with a downstroke. So almost all further important accents in the lick are played with upstrokes because that's how they land in the beat. Sometimes you do have some downstrokes in there. My personal way of deciding if I'm playing a downstroke or an upstroke is simply following the 16th note pattern. So when I look at the measure, I'm always visualizing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up for every single 16th note. But I'm still thinking about that downstroke. If there would not be a rest, I would play that downstroke. So instead of starting on the second 16th note with a downstroke, I'm taking that missed first downstroke, the start of the measure into account, and I'm starting with an upstroke instead. That's very important because not only do you always know that way when to use a downstroke or an upstroke for your licks, it will also always feel natural because you're in that system of down, up, down, up. So if I decide to play a dead note as a variation of this lick on the first note instead of a rest, my entire picking pattern still works. <laughs> Because all my picking strokes are placed correctly when I think about that continuous 16th note grid. So this lick is so satisfying to play, I have to play it again. The reason why it's tickling my brain cells in exactly the right way is because you don't have those boring accents that always fall on the beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. Your lines will sound so much more sophisticated and interesting as soon as you start placing awesome accents on the offbeat. So syncopated phrasing will unlock a completely new world for you right now. You don't have to learn extremely advanced scales or arpeggios or anything. If you place your notes interestingly within the measure, you will sound like a much better player than you are immediately, I promise. <laughs> I had to play it again before the video ends. <laughs> All right, my friends, those are my five best tips, my five pillars of timing. Make sure to download your entire workout package for this lesson right now and start practicing with the link down below, patreon.com slash burn. Once you join us over there, you also get access to over 20 guitar courses I made especially for you. So it's a shame that you don't have them yet. I'm sure you will enjoy them a lot and they will immediately improve your guitar technique and theory skills. So if you're serious about this, finally join us today with the link down below. Over 10,000 members just like you await you over there. I'm also waiting for you over there. See you on Patreon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.